Hey, what's up? This is Chosen, and this video is going to be a Chosen's Corner episode featuring Scratch, who I'm super excited for because I've never had him on the channel before, but he's been a long-term content creator for Raid Shadow Legends, and these episodes are typically an opportunity to get to know somebody, pull back the curtain, have a casual, fun conversations, talk about Raid, talk about life, and with that being said, let's get into it. All right, and now I am joined by Scratch. What's up, man? How you doing today? Yo, doing great, buddy. Thanks for having me. Just having a chilled one, you know. Been working a bit today, and time to relax a bit now. Yeah, for sure. No, I'm looking forward to chatting with you. I've never had you on the channel before, so you want to just quick kind of give us a, a basic rundown of who you are and what kind of content you do and all that good stuff? Sure, buddy. So, hey, guys, I'm Scratch. I'm uh, doing uh, streams on Twitch. A few months ago, started to do some YouTube, more towards the uh, end game content, clan boss teams, arena, crazy guides on champions. So you'll be seeing a lot of a uh, crazy sort of content to say like this. But that's about it, as an introduction to say like this. <laughs> okay, and and where are you from, Scratch? I'm, I'm from Romania. Actually, uh, a lot of people used to think that I'm Russian for some reason. I don't know why, because I don't think I sound Russian, do I? <laughs> well, you know, us, us Americans, you know, we can never tell the difference, but mm. <laughs> I, I, I could see that as an American, I could see that, but but no. That, that, that's what I assumed as well, you know? Exactly. Um, so you said you were streaming and then got into YouTube. How long have you been streaming? Streaming? I've been streaming some other sort of games as well, so I would say like 18 months, I think, but not really serious. So I got it more serious into streaming, like... A month before the lockdown, to say like this, so like the last five, six months, I got a bit more into serious, like trying to keep a schedule and uh, do it more uh, frequently, to say like this, you know. Do you do you have a job or do you is content your your gig or what do you do? No, I, I have a job as well. I run a I run a cafe. Oh, cafe, okay. This job, so cakes, coffee, stuff like that, you know. Oh, cool. All right. So then you just kind of do squeeze in content when you can on on the side and. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, and and what other games do you cover? You said you got into other stuff as well. I used to play like shooters mainly, Destiny. I used to play some Fortnite as well till they destroyed the game completely. Then, bit of Call of Duty, Valorant, Overwatch. Like... I played a bit of Overwatch too, but wasn't really my jam. Okay, um, I'm not an expert on Fortnite. What did they hot? They destroyed it. You said. Oh yeah, like every update, they just made it worse and worse. You know. Oh really. Honestly, that game used to be really, really good early on. Like, it was so different compared to any other game. Like, probably that's why it was the most successful game out there ever, I think. Yeah, up there with, like, League of Legends and stuff, but Fortnite was even yeah, more popular. I think so, yeah, yeah. Cool, okay. Um, and what got you into Raid? Into Raid? So, I used to play mobile games. Uh -huh. Like, I always liked these sort of games, like, you know, clans, have activity, be a bit competitive and stuff. But then I kind of stopped playing uh, mobile games. So I think the most I spent in a mobile game before was uh, around $800. And that was in a Mortal Kombat game. And I was like, damn, I can't do that again, you know? <clears throat> Spending so much money in a game in a mobile game for me was like, no way. And then I stopped playing mobile games for like a year and a half. And I was just bored at work one day and got an ad on Instagram. You know, I think it was a picture with Zargala or something. And I said, let me see what's this game, you know? And then I just got hooked up, man. And later on, add another hundred percent to <laughs> to the rest of money you've spent to end up in another mobile game getting crashed. You know? <laughs> yeah, I think uh, yeah, raid was definitely the first time in my life I spent uh, more than like a, a one or two hundred dollars on a game. Because similar to you, I had kind of messed around for fun on Clash of Clans and Clash Royale and some of those popular mobile games. Mm. But but I had never like uh, wailed out or or whatever. Um, until Raid kind of hooked me in and we all kind of started playing about the same time. Did you start playing about when I did, like a year and a half ago or so? Yeah, I started playing like January last year. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. So I still had the, the Santa Fusion and stuff, but the first three, three to four months I was free to play in this game. So I haven't spent not even one dollar, you know? Okay. And yeah, now you're somewhere probably around like 1500 if I had to guess. Maybe? Uh, spend? No, I'm probably around eight, 8 k I think. Oh, well, because you said 100% of what you spent on before. Yeah, I, I, I meant to say 1,000. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the truth comes out eventually. 
Okay. Uh, small, di small difference, you know? <laughs> yeah. And so do you compete up into like uh, trying to get platinum every week or? I am going for platinum every week. Usually top, starting from like top, the, the highest I got, I think was top five. But starting from there, I'm usually in top 30 all the time. And I saw you, uh, I saw one of your kind of most recent videos was talking about breaking the speed meta. Um, you want to walk us through kind of your thoughts on trying to break the speed meta? It's kind of a hot topic right now. It is. I mean, you need the specific champions for it. Either you go crazy high resistance and break it like that. Either you use specific champions, but while using speed as well to try to, to break them. So I use Valk, for example, in there. And you're familiar with Valk's passive. Yep. Gaining meter, decreasing ter meter. So... Sifi, she buffs so much, like she throws three buffs instantly, you know, so that makes Valk the best counter for Sifi. All of the Sifis are faster than Arbiters these days because it's easier to get them faster because of the, the higher base speed on them. So no matter how fast is their Sifi and the rest of the team, as soon as Sifi goes in their team, I'm going to take the turn instant because of Valk, you know. Mm -hmm. So no matter how fast they are compared to me. Okay, and and what's being someone who competes in platinum on a pretty regular basis? What are your thoughts on it? Are you having fun with it? Do you think it's uh, man more or less? Yeah, I'm having fun. That's why I'm doing it. But uh, you do have to. You need to have deep pockets. Sorry, <laughs> be like this. So I'm left behind now. I haven't uh, farmed crazily gear in a while. I haven't spent much in the last couple of months. So I feel like I'm, I've been left behind speed-wise. So every time I see the speed pack coming in the store, you know, I'm like, damn, again, I'm going to find 10, 20 people faster than me, you know? Yeah. <laughs> like that, that's, that's happening every single time, you know? Yeah, so the whales are probably buying those speed packs like every time. Oh, they are, trust me. Every single person that plays platinum and likes it, they're buying the speed pack. Yeah, the people that are up in the top 10, top 20 area, the you got to have pretty insane gear on your champions. Do you do you run like an auto clicker overnight for for grinding oh, yeah. gear and stuff? I, I run auto clicker for for a long time, yeah. Like uh like every night when you go to bed or not recently. I used to do it almost every night, so probably like 5 nights a week I used to to auto click. Now I am doing it 2 to 3 days. I I am auto clicking usually and yeah, I would say I probably do only like one or two nights a week. I try, I try to get away from spending hundreds of dollars on energy uh, if I can help it. But I do auto click like during you know a dragon tournament or something. I might go to bed, load up two k or something, and and run mm. dragon. But I, I definitely don't do it like every night. Like I know some people do. Every time they step away from their computer, they they run an auto clicker. But I, I don't want to spend that kind of money on energy. <laughs> I know. I mean, I honestly. I had no idea the madness that people spend money in games like this, man. Like, I had no idea that people will actually spend in a mobile game 10, 20, 30k in a game. I was like, no way, you know? That, that's something insane. And there's so many in this game, like, next level, honestly. Like, you see new new accounts coming in the game, like, one, two weeks, all the accounts bank, one, two, three million power. And it was like, oh, I spent 15k already. I was like, wow you know like shocked <laughs> yeah money's money's relative it's it's a relative thing you know to some people five dollars is is a big deal and to some people uh five thousand is nothing so, yeah i know <laughs> so it's all it, 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 a game like this when you're cramming everybody into one box the money is such a wide spectrum for each person that you, you get pretty insane spending habits for, for some people it can vary so much but what what do you think i know i had a, I had a meeting um last week where I was kind of taxed with the opportunity to, or not taxed with the opportunity, but given the opportunity to kind of voice my my kind of main concerns with with Ray, what would be yours if you? Yeah, I actually I actually saw that video. Yeah. Okay. Did you agree or did you disagree? Oh yes. Oh, absolutely. Definitely, the dupe system is something that needs to be implemented. Then we you had the the way they do everything with the community. That's again, super, super important. No content again, super important. Like I'm just going to stop a bit from right here. I, st I started playing like a game like two months ago. It's called Idol Arena or something like that. AFK I Arena? Uh, I think it's Idol Arena, oh, okay. but it's similar with that AFK Arena. So graphics are decent. They're not like the 7DS and stuff like that, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, I maybe spend like $20, $30 just by buying cheap packs, like $1, $1, you know? 
day by day like this. Yep. And I can tell you, I'm in like top 50 worldwide in the two months. And the thing with that company, every week, man, they're bringing new content, new updates, new patches. If they make something like a bug, you know, the next day they fix the bug, okay? And they give you 300 gems now, 1,000 gems now for the update. Sorry for uh, sorry for the patch, you know, enjoy the patch. Bang, 1,000 gems, keep them there, 300 there all the time. And they're super, super nice. Like the way they deal with the community, the way they bring their updates all the time on a regular basis every Wednesday of the week is... Is super super good and it's a small game as well they're not making probably not even a quarter of the money that trade makes you know yeah that that is surprising uh we can all kind of see how obviously raid has been successful in the first two years so it is surprising that uh the, 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 there isn't a budget for more consistent content into the game but i think we're gonna see a shift in raid just my prediction i can't uh, guarantee it. I think we're going to see a shift from customer acquisition to customer retention. So I think we may start to see like the fragment summoning and the bizarre, the 3v3. I think we may start to see things instead of uh, once a year, maybe two or three times a year. <laughs> so. Yeah, probably. <laughs> I mean, I think it's time for them to move anyway because uh, it's been out for like, what, two years? About, at some yeah. point, at some point, I mean, you're going to keep gathering new players, new players. But at some point, the market is just going to be saturated with, with the game because they already added all the market into their game. So they, they won't be having new people to bring it to the game, you know? So they will have to change the way they they do all the stuff. Yeah, and no. They will have to bring updates, uh, proper content and stuff like this to keep us busy. Because if not, the, the game is going to die. Either it's just a test, this game for them, and they're taking all the feedback for the next game they're planning and they're just gonna not care about this one you know or they actually gonna decide and work properly on the game from from here on to say like this you know i mean i that i think that would be a mistake given the size of the player base and, and the popularity of the game um i'm not saying you're wrong in, in that theory and maybe that was the plan from the start but that just seems i mean to throw away that much potential it just seems weird to me but but it is shocking in, in the last year how little there has been launched. And then the whole roadmap thing, uh, how that got, how that got, how that, I mean, I would understand being off by a couple months or something, but to be off like a full calendar year on some of That's that, road, it, that, so I wonder what changed. I mean, obviously we all know what's going on in the world right now. Uh, so I don't know if that changed it when people had to work from home or, or people got laid off. I mean, who knows? And no one, no one knows exactly to be sure, but in terms of what do you think the campfire is going to be? I know we saw that kind of teased two weeks Yo, ago. Like, I actually had this question and honestly, I have zero clues about the, the, the campfire, what it can be like. Whenever I think something good, they always surprise me with something a bit worse, you know? So I have no idea what to say. All sorts of ideas like uh, silver mines and things like this, but I have a feeling it's going to be something that we're not going to expect any of us, like something totally different than we imagined, you know? Yeah, I mean, I was I was talking about how the scaffolding went up so high. Like, it looked like it's going to be super tall. It's not going to be mm. like some short little thing. So I almost wonder, because I remember on the roadmap, they talked about the mythical artifact crafting. I almost yeah. wonder if it's going to be some sort of a blacksmith crafting mechanic where you can like salvage trash gear instead of selling it like you could choose if you want to salvage or sell like whether you want the materials or the silver and then you, I, I wonder if it's gonna be some sort of a crafting blacksmith type forge mechanic that would be awesome though because that's super needed as well like taking in consideration the random roles we have here and the small chances of actually getting something of good quality to keep like how you said the auto clicking as well like 2k energy you see how many times you're doing that and you end up with nothing you know <laughs> yeah yeah it'd be like, nice to at least get some like crafting materials to uh to try to forge something yeah i mean i would i would understand if the game is like that you once every two months you get a, a god tier piece and you're like yay but then we should have only 10 champions in the whole game, you know? <laughs> but when I have hundreds of champions to build, you know, and I, I get a piece of gear that I'm proud of, like, every two months, I'm like, you know, it's, it's mission impossible, you know? Mm -hmm. And 
Uh, I know you said you dip your hand in other games. Uh, do you see yourself playing Raid long term, or do you have a certain goal for your content? Do you want to be a full time content creator at, at some point, or? I mean, yeah, for sure, I would love that, honestly. Mm -hmm. But uh, it does it does take time, and I'm honestly the Raid, the that Raid releases content and stuff. I don't really see it happening with Raid to go full time, honestly, unless they're literally shifting everything. We get content every month we have a lot of stuff to go through like all of us you know because there's so many content creators in raid everything's been covered like a thousand times and it's honestly with what we got at the moment to work with is not much you can bring new like when i started my channel i started with crazy clan bosses uh clan boss teams nobody had them one kill ultra nightmare with uh, no unkillable no block damage was like world's first things like this but those things are gone because there are not many options to do it with, you know? Yeah, well, Raid kind of hit that that point where it shifts from the honeymoon phase to uh, to kind of a seasoned game that has a... Like, I remember back when we first started, no one had a clue what they were doing. Uh, there was really no content, no content creators. There was like five people making videos about the game. But now you hit a point where Raids become popular enough where it's going to shift to almost being like saturated, like over covered. So yeah, it's going to be without new things being added to the game to explore. Yeah, it is going to be tough for, for creators to, to think of a new video every, every day or two. How often do you release videos? I am trying to release like four or five a week. Sometimes okay. I just don't have the time because of work, but I'm trying to keep it around there four or five a week. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. I, I, I think I try to, yeah, about the same five or six a week and it, it gets tougher the longer the game is out to, to uh, it is man like, to get honestly. creative and to get creative and, and keep going but but yeah we'll see like i said i think they'll they'll shift into more more other uh like content production instead of customer acquisition hopefully and then that'll uh that'll make it a little bit easier how uh how often do you stream like how long are your streams and stuff stream i i don't stream usually saturdays and one random day of the week usually is uh Tuesdays or Thursdays. I usually stream from 6 30 p.m. UK time. That's when I get home like one hour before, take a shower, have a cup of coffee to refresh and uh, crack straight on it, you know? And usually it depends two, three hours, four hours. I usually stream Arena Reset as well on Mondays. Oh, okay. That can go up to six hours. Now, with the lockdown before, it was different because I used to stream like two o'clock every day and Arena Reset. So it was, was way different, you know? By yeah. the time you were, you were starting your stream yourself, I was a, I was about to end around that time all the time, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're definitely different time zones. Um, what are your thoughts on the boosting, the platinum uh, boosting? I hate the boosting, honestly, and it's been started since uh, day one of platinum. Like, I'm not gonna give names and stuff, but top clans they they created the boosting, uh, the boosting chat, the boosting idea. Like, let's get all together quick and boost. This week, we can go three of us. Next week, three of us. So I'm not going to name. But people that are complaining now about it, they started it, you know. We all... Funny. All of us that are entrenched in the community, we know the uh, we know what's going on and, and the names and, and, and the clans. And yeah, I, wh how would you fix it? How, how would you combat the people teaming up against other, you know, players and smashing players and boosting? What is your... If Plarium asked you... What would you say? So it's a pretty hard situation to do in the next way because uh, it's like a knife with two uh, sharp edges because if you take the points away from winning in defense, then it's kind of screwing you over. So you only, only got to win from uh, offense, you know. Then we have the limited fights. Ten fights is still a lot of fights. So either if they're changing that, like limited from gold as well, how it's working now or whatever other people are saying to do it, you can still get 10, 15 people to, to boost you and you still get high at the top. So that's not really a solution to do it like that either. So they really got to find some sort of balance. If I lost to your defense once or twice, you know, I cannot attack you anymore. I don't know, put a cooldown, 24 hours. Even, even a cooldown of like 15 minutes. I mean, you know, because there's so much shifting that goes on the last hour. Even yeah, I mean, small cooldowns. Is, the thing is that uh, they did put it up to 10 minutes. So if 
is a cooldown of 10 minutes once I attack you 10 times, you know. But even that was able to be broken by force closing the game or something like that. And then you are coming back to the game and you are able to continue attacking the same player without passing those 10 minutes, you know. Mm -hmm. But I think, I don't know if you remember, but once they changed that, people, they started boosting like from Monday already. They were like triple the points of the rest of the people because they were starting to boost early just to ensure that first place. So it's, I think it's hard to actually fix it in a way. The best way, I think, is just throw in a crazy cooldown. I, I couldn't beat you in two tries. Okay, I'm going to get better and come back after in a couple of days or next day or something like that, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I, I think that is really the only way. And the specific targeting and um, what if they... What if they put a cooldown a lot like on refreshing opponents that's another another thing so that's that's how most of the clever people they end up in the high tier of platinum so mm -hmm. i'm i'm telling you how i'm doing it every monday for example so i'm playing my arena i'm attacking three teams out of there so i'm looking at the points which one gives me the highest points now if i see a team there that i know are faster they have like a nuke hegemon and it's gonna slow me down or Anything that slows me down in those teams, I, I won't attack them. I won't. I will refresh till I get another opponent that I know I'm gonna wipe down in six, seven seconds, mm -hmm. and I'm keep gonna spam those opponents. Like if I find the same guy ten times, it's bad luck for him because ten times he's gonna get wiped. You know. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And and how much uh, how much resource does it cost you to finish in platinum? Like how uh, many so, gems are you spending to make sure that happens every week? Uh, probably like. 30, 40, 50 gems. Oh, that's it? That's pretty yeah. good. Who's so your... honestly, Go ahead, sorry. I'm, I'm doing arena in the last 15 minutes. That, that's all it takes me. So I, I'm starting from gold sometimes, if I'm not uh, in platinum from before, if nobody manages to take, me, to take me out. And if I'm starting from gold, the last 15, 20 minutes, I'm banging top 30. That's pretty good. Who are your most used champions? Offense... I'm using uh, Trunda, Arbiter, Warlord, Krisk, Rotos, Duchess, uh, Madame Series, and now the godly Suzeran Katun who just broke the high resistance Mera. You're going to see a lot of change this Monday in uh, in Arena with the high I've, resistance. I've been talking about Suzeran Katun, yeah. No, he's... Uh, you want to you wanna walk people through your thoughts on, on why? Yeah, so I, I actually made a video the other day, so... I'm not sure how many remembers, but when the champion came out, his skill clearly said that it cannot be resisted on removing a shield, uh, block damage, and unkillable. So those are three super popular uh, buffs in Arena. The main meta at the moment is high resistance. And when I'm talking about high resistance in Platinum, I'm talking about seven to 800 resistance with the aura mm -hmm. from the champion. And having the high accuracy, it can be pretty tough to be able to get the right speed so it makes you a bit of a, a challenge there especially if you're fighting a team with a valk with a hegemon so it can slow you down quite a lot to to kill those teams you know mm -hmm. but uh not having to worry about accuracy with suzeran katun and knowing that he will never throw a, a with a weak hit because he's removing the debuffs and then he attacks so he's going to be a hundred percent remove the buffs those three buffs that i just said before Every single time, so he's never gonna fail you on that. Now and I no don't. I'm sorry action. to interrupt you. I don't have him, but where does it say cannot be resisted? Well, that's the thing. It doesn't say anymore. So oh, we it, thought it's just how it is. We thought like a few months ago that they ghost nerfed him. You know, uh huh. Because that that thing dis uh, disappeared from the skill. But we tried it, and we knew that uh, it cannot be resisted. So we did kept it in the clan for like two three weeks. We gave advantage to our clan mates before I made the video. I didn't want to make the video before because uh, I, I just found it fair for them to actually you, uh, get it against the other competitive clans out there too. You sneaky Romanians. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we had, you know? And then I said, okay, I guess people, they start catching up on us now. So I'm going to make the video now. Okay. So I, so I, it, it, you don't even need accuracy for the, uh, for the A3. Zero uh, accuracy. Oh, and he strips all the current meta. So <laughs> the current meta is going down just with 
a, a champion like that. You don't need to book him. You don't. You don't even need masteries on him. Like when I made a video, I forgot that I didn't have masteries. And when I went to say, okay, I have this masteries, I get to that part, and I was like, oh damn, I have no masteries on him. I completely forgot about it. That's awesome. I love it. Yeah, I don't have him, so I guess I never really knew that, um, or was able to test him or anything. That's that's cool. I like it. And yeah, then, so actually, go ahead. I messaged uh, the diamond, and he said they they will they will fix that and put it in the description now to to be back on it. They just made mistakes, like you've seen how I was with Battle Kazar, like what eighteen yeah. months, eighteen months or more, having uh, the description saying fifteen percent damage when it was actually twenty. So so on Suzer and Katan, it's meant to be like that. It just yeah, does it's meant to be like that. Yeah. So so he's still gonna be strong. It's yeah, yeah, they're not gonna, they're not gonna change anything on him. They're just gonna add that thing in the skill description that was missing. It cannot be resisted. Yep, and bad owl for those are that are uh, confused. His his prey upon passive used to say inflicts fifteen percent more damage, and now they fixed it to say twenty. Um, so exactly. that was a that was a small change there. Cool. Well, like I don't I don't, <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to take too much of your time. I know we're hitting about that 25, 30 minute mark, but uh, we'll let everybody know kind of wh where they can find you and what you're going to be doing coming up and, and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. So guys, Twitch channel, YouTube channel, Scratch AK47, Scratch starting with the K. Twitch, you'll be finding me on 630 GMT times. YouTube, keep an eye daily. If you're interested in endgame content and uh, yeah, I guess you'll be finding me there. Discord, other streams lurking or chatting. <laughs> That's right. I, I, I see you in my stream sometimes lurking. I got, I'm on to you. I'm a big lurker, man. I'm a big lurker because I'm, I'm doing my stuff. So literally just now, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> so I was lurking in like three streams, okay? And I ended my stream and all that. And I was just writing you the message in Discord and I just click on it and I was seeing a girl dancing on a street pole and i was like what what did i ended up is this i saw i saw i saw you i saw you post that in the chat there <laughs> i was like what <laughs> you're funny cool well hey man i appreciate you uh taking the time to join me uh, it was really fun finally uh bringing you on the channel and chatting so uh so take it easy man, sure, man. appreciate you having me and uh take care brother <laughs> all right thanks take care have a good one all right, it's going to do it for this video. Huge shout out to Scratch for taking the time to join me. And I will link to his stuff below in a pinned comment. Definitely check him out. A good dude who makes good content. So, yeah, as always, thank you for watching. Have a good rest of your day. Peace.